Remember when when you if it could have been probably a high school geometry or some other geometry course, but when you first talked about circles, you defined it to be this. Now listen carefully. So you, you looked at a center at this point right in the middle. That was called a center, right? So a circle was defined to be a set of points. And how many points are on this circle? An infinite number. A set of points. A set of points such that these points are equidistant. Meaning they, there's the same distance all the way around from this what? Center. So that's, that's the way we defined a circle. So a set of points, how many points are there? And if it's a number, a set of points that are equidistant, equidistant, equidistant from a set point called the center. Okay, and then these little segments that I'm drawing, what are those called? Do you remember? the segment from the center to a point in the circle, what's that called? The radius. Radius. And how many radii are there? An infinite number. There's an infinite number of radii. Okay? So that's, that's the way we defined a circle. Okay, now, in a plane... In a plane, I'm going to go ahead and use this one. Let's suppose that my center is the origin. Okay? Let's suppose my center is the origin. And let's suppose that my radius is six units long. So I'm going to go six units to the right, six units up six units to the left, and six units down, and we use those four points to help me draw the circle. I'm going to do the best I can with drawing the circle. That's not a very good one. I know. All right. So, so, Notice that no matter where you are, all these distances are supposed to be how long? Six units, whatever it is, right? Six units. Six units, six units, six units, and so on. Okay? The equation, not this circle, but the equation of a circle in general looks like this. Now listen carefully. Equation of a circle in standard form. The equation of a circle in standard form. The equation of a circle in standard form has this expression. And then I'll, I'll tell you what the letters stand for. You're going to say x minus h squared, write it out, x minus h squared, plus y minus k squared equals r squared. The derivation, we're not deriving, when I'm not showing you how that came about, but it is in one of the videos in Canvas. Excuse me, what, what was the last part after? r squared. r squared. x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. Okay. That's called the, the standard form of a circle. Standard form. That word standard is important because there's also a general form. That's the standard form. I'll give you the standard form. Notice it's written as x minus, right? Not x plus, but what? Minus. x minus. That's going to be important. x minus. y minus. Not x plus, not y plus, but what? Minus. X minus. That, that syntax is important. The h, k, u, c, 
That's called the center. HK is called a center. So if you have a circle that's written in standard form, looks like this, then HK is your center. So H is the X coordinate, uh, K is the what? Y coordinate. R, this R here, is your what? Radius. R is your radius. Okay? All right, so let's look at some examples. I'm going to write some equations in standard form. I'm going to write equations in standard form. And then I'm going to ask you to tell me what the center and the radius is, and then we'll graph it. So you're going to use your, your grids. So here are the directions. For each equation of a circle, determine, determine the center and radius. Determine the center and radius, R-A-D-I-U-S. Okay, number one. X minus 4 squared plus Y minus 7 squared equal 16. So write this out. X minus 4 squared plus Y minus 7 squared equal 16. All right. Now, remember your center is HK, right? And when determining HK, you need to think about it in terms of X minus and Y minus. So watch, watch what I'm pointing to. X minus H, Y minus K. So what is H? Mm-mm. X minus H. H is, H is 4. H is 4. Y minus K. K is what? 7. seven. So your center four seven. is 4 comma 7. That's your center. Now, what is the radius? Okay, so if you look back at your formula, look back at your formula, this is not r, but what? r squared, where r is the radius. So I want you to think about this. r squared is equal to what number? 16. So how to get r by itself? Square root of both sides. Yeah, you could have looked at it and said 4, right? Now be careful, be careful. Remember when we did uh, quadratic equations by square root prop, we did that plus or minus? You don't do plus or minus here. Why don't you do the minus? You're dealing with distance. Distance is always what? Positive. Okay? Distance is positive. That's why you do the plus or minus. You just do a square root. Positive square root. So what's R? Four. All right. So you found the center. You found the radius. The radius is 4. Okay? All right. Now, in terms of graphing, it's very simple the way you're going to do this. Listen carefully. Remember when I did this right here? When I did this, I did the center, and then I went right, left, up, down, and I connected the four dots best I could? You're going to do that. So, the center is this number 1. The center is 4, 7. That's in what quadrant? Y quadrant? First. All right. 
Then from that point, I'm going to use the radius, the length of the radius. The length of the radius is four units, right? So I go four units to the right. One, two, three, four. So there's one of my points on the circle. Four units to the left. One, two, three, four. Four units down. One, two, three, four. And then four units up. One, two, three, four. I don't know, just estimate where it is. And then you just connect the, the four points within a circular motion. And so there's your circle. Just do the best you can. What was that? Yeah. All right, so that's where I'm at. Okay. All right, any questions? All right, now listen to the next one. Okay, so for each equation, determine the center and the radius. At times, they will ask you to also determine the domain and range. Domain and range. So let's do that. So also determine domain and range. Okay. Determine domain and range. So last semester, you had that idea of domain and range. Now, when you do the domain and range, guys, just use interval notation. Okay, interval notation. Okay, listen carefully to what I'm, what I'm doing. Now listen carefully. You remember the domain is a set of which coordinates? Domain. X coordinates. The range is a set of Y coordinates. Okay? Domain is a set of X coordinates. And the range is a set of y coordinates. So the main set of x coordinates, the um, range is a set of y coordinates. Once you draw your circle, it's very easy to determine the main range. Here's all you do. To determine, to determine the domain, you go from left to right, because notice when I go from left to right, that's, that's the x-axis in it, left, right. When determining the range, remember the range is set of which coordinates? Y. Think y-axis. So y-axis goes from bottom what? Up. Bottom, up, left, right. So domain, left, right, makes sense, because that's, that's what your x-axis does. Your y-axis goes up and down, so you go from bottom up. Always go from, I started at the bottom because that's your smallest. I mean, remember in writing an interval, you always go from smallest to largest. We've talked about that. All right, let's do the, the uh, domain first. When I go from left to right, what x, when I go from left to right, this, this is the first point I get to, right? What is that x-coordinate? Zero. Zero. Y'all agree? And in, in my x-coordinate, uh, and the other x-coordinate is going to be all these other x-coordinates going all the way to what x-coordinate? Y'all agree it's, it's 8, right? Now, these are all points in the graph. So these are all solutions, right? Remember, any point in the graph, whenever we graph something, we're graphing the what? Solutions. Solutions. We've talked about that. We're graphing the solutions. So these are all solutions. So when I, when I write the interval, we're going to use brackets, not parentheses, because parentheses indicates not a solution. Brackets indicates what? It is a solution. All right, so listen to your domain. So your domain will equal bracket, what's the x-coordinate? Zero. Some of you will say, well, it looks like a 7. Yeah, be careful. It's that if, if, if I were to label that point, look, label the point. If I were to label the point, remember labeling the point, you start the origin. And I'm going straight up, right? So it says I'm not moving right or left. My x coordinate is what? Zero. Zero. And I go straight up, and this y coordinate is what? 7. So I'm going to ask you again, what is this x coordinate right here? Zero. What's this x-coordinate right here? 8. So I go from 0 all the way to what? 
8. So any, any number between 0 and 8 is going to be one of these x coordinates on the graph. You see it? All right. So you're going to say bracket 0, comma what? 8. Now let's talk about the range. The range, you go from bottom up. So when I go from the bottom up, look at the, the, at the, at the lowest point on the, on the uh, circle, which is this right here, right? What is that y coordinate? Three. What is the largest y coordinate? Eleven. Very good. So you go from three to eleven. Okay. So we'll do a couple more, and you'll see it's not really that bad. All right. Let's look at another number two. Okay. Suppose I had this now. Suppose I had x plus. 3 squared plus y minus 5 squared equal 25. So x plus 3 squared plus y minus 5 squared equal 25. You have the formula in front of you. You have the formula in front of you. You have it. you got to remember the formula says x minus y minus, right? It doesn't say x plus y plus, it says x minus. So this x plus 3, and, and we talked about how to rewrite things multiple times in here with regards to what we're about to say. But x plus 3 is the same thing as saying x minus a what? Negative 3. Right? Because remember, a subtraction is the same as adding the opposite. We, we discussed that before. So now I'm going to ask you, what is H now? Negative 3. So when, when determining your center, when determining your center, you need to think X minus Y minus. So X plus 3 is really X minus a what? Negative 3. So H, so the x coordinate of your center is what? Negative 3. Y minus k, which is, so I already had that y minus, right? So y minus k, so what's, what's the y coordinate of your center then? 5. So there's your center. So your center is negative 3, 5. Students that do the opposite, those that say 3, negative 5, that's because they don't really understand the equation of a circle. The equation of a circle is x minus h squared. So x minus. And then y minus. So you've got to think in those terms. And it's not x plus and y plus, it's x minus. What's the radius? 5. five. Radius is 5. The square root of 25 is 5. So all you do is just take the square root of that number. Okay, so let's go ahead and graph it. It's number two. I'm going to uh, label. I'm going, I'm going to go ahead and plot the center. So negative 3, 5. So negative 3, 5 is in the second quadrant. Negative 3, 5. So there's the center. From that center, I'm going to go five units all the way around it, right? So five to the right. One, two, three, four, five. Five up. One, two, three, four, five. Five to the left. One, two, three, four, five. And then five down. One, two, three, four, five. Y'all agree? So got the, uh, that point, right? And then once you draw those four points, you just do the best you can with drawing the circle. Do the best you can. Do the best you can with drawing the circle. No. All right. All right. This should really be more curved. See, you have, any, you, you have a pencil. You can erase this little part right here and make it look a little bit better. It looks like it's a straight segment. It's not supposed to be straight. 
It should be a little bit more curved. All right. So, any questions on on the on graphing part? So, so you so what you know the center and the radius you use you, you graph. It. All right. Now let's talk about the domain. All right. So domain equal. All right. Domain you go from left to right, just like you would along the uh, x-axis. So I get to the to the left point here. Correct. What is that x coordinate? Negative eight. So you go straight down. You see that negative eight, right? Bracket negative eight, comma, and then what is that y? Uh, I'm sorry, what is that uh, x coordinate the end uh, in the end over here? Two. So what you found is this. Now listen carefully. Remember, all these are our solutions, correct? Mm -hmm. All these are solutions. That's why we use brackets because because every point every point on that graph is a solution. So hence the idea of brackets here. Every point. If you look at all these points, all the x coordinates. Will any, listen, listen to my words, will any of these x coordinates ever be 10? Will any of these x coordinates ever be 10? No. Because you just told me that my x coordinates are going to be between what two numbers? Negative 8 and 2. It can't be 10 because here's 10. Does your graph never go that far, right? But you can tell me that, that this x coordinate is going to be between negative 8 and, I'm, yeah, negative 8 and 2. In fact, it's whatever it is, it looks like it's going to be what? Close to 0? Mm -hmm. All right. So that's what you found is your domain, the set of x coordinates. My x coordinates are going to be between what two numbers? Negative 8 and 2. So let's talk about the range. The range, R. So the range, you go from bottom up. Remember, you always go from small to largest. So go from bottom up. This is my lowest point. What is that y coordinate? Zero. Very good. What is this y coordinate? Ten. So you see, this is zero. This is ten. Look, look at your x, at your y axis. Ten, zero. So bracket zero all the way to what? Ten. Okay. All right. Let's do one more with the graphing. Number three. Can I listen? Yes. I can't hear you. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Number three. All right. Listen. Listen carefully. Number three. Don't let it throw you off. Listen carefully. Number three. X squared plus y minus 5 squared equal 9. Write it out. x squared plus 5 minus y squared equal 9. Okay, so I want to find the center. the center is? Right here. The center. What do you think the center is? Zero, I mean zero, five. Oh, y'all agree with that? Zero, five? The x squared is confusing you, right? Yeah. Well, remember the formula. What does the formula say? X minus, x minus h squared plus y minus k squared. So, all right, so let's look at that. x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. So so these are binomials. You, 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 you tend to do better if those were binomials, right? But y'all agree that, that this x squared is the same thing as saying x minus 0 squared? x minus h. What's x minus 0? x, right? And x squared is x squared. All right, so if it's just x squared or if it's just y squared, think of x minus what number? Zero or y minus zero. Yes? So you're telling me that x squared is the same thing as saying x minus one squared? Is that what you're saying? Because if you square x minus one, you get x squared minus two x plus one. That's not x squared. 
So it can't be that. So y'all agree now that x squared is the same thing as say x minus zero squared. Just like I asked you about x, y'all agree with what I'm about to say, that x is the same thing as saying x minus zero. Because x minus zero is what? X. x. So x squared is the same thing as saying x minus what? Zero squared. Okay? So therefore, what's your center? What's h? Zero. zero. What's k? Five, very good. Not negative five, but five. And what's the radius? Uh, three. Three. All right. Now, let's graph this. So my center is zero, five. So my center is on the y-axis, right? Center's on the y-axis. Uh, so there's zero, five. And then I'm going to use the radius to help me draw the circle. So three units to the right. Three units up, three units to the left, three units down, and then draw the draw as best you can. Draw as best you can. Okay? So there's your circle. There's your circle. All right? Now let's talk about the domain of this circle. The domain equals bracket. From where, guys? Negative 3 to 3. Very good. The range goes, you go from bottom up. The lowest point, what's that y value right here? 2. two. All the way to what y value? 8. So 2 to 8. OK? All right. Now listen to the words I'm about to ask you. So you see the center is, is, is on, the, uh, on this y-axis, correct? What if I asked you, what would the equation be, what would the equation be if I had this circle? Hold on. I just want you to, to think, I just want to see if you can figure it out. So... So, yeah, the center is zero, zero. Okay, so what would the equation be if, if, if that was the circle? Huh? X squared plus five. X squared plus y squared equals 25. So the equation of the circle would be, the equation of the circle would be x squared plus y squared equals 25. What's... Remember, x squared is the same thing as saying x minus 0 squared, right? y squared is the same thing as saying what? y minus 0 squared, and 25 is 5 squared, right? So the center is 0, 0. That's the origin, 0, 0. And the radius is how long? 5 units. So hence 25. You square your radius to get this number. Okay? All right, so any questions on given the equation of a circle using a radius? Now, I'm going to say this. The, the, the circle was easy to graph because my radius was what kind of number? A whole number. One, two, three, four, five. It was, it, it, none of them were decimals, right? They could be. If they are, I'm not going to ask you to graph it. The only time I ask you to graph it is if, is if your radius is a whole number. So let's look at this. Now, listen carefully. Let's look at this. Same directions, except this time I'm not going to ask you to uh, graph. So I'm, all I'm going to ask you to do is this. Find the center and radius. Oops, I spelled it wrong. R-A-D-I-U-S. Find the center and radius. I'm going to do a couple and just see if you can figure this out. Number four, just find the center and the radius. No graph because it's not going to be a whole number x plus 5 squared plus y plus 1 squared equal 6. x plus 5 squared plus y plus 1 squared equal 6. All of you should tell me what the center is. What's the center? Negative 5, negative 1. Negative 5, negative 1. 
Because remember, you have to think about it, x minus a what? Negative 5, and then y minus a negative 1. That's how you got to think about it. So the center is negative 5, negative 1. The radius, remember, that other side, if you look, remember your formula, that other side was r squared, right? What is r squared over here? Six. Six. How do you get r by itself? Square root. square root. So if I square root both sides, then what's r equal to? Yeah, but just say the square root of six. Square root of six. All right, so r is square root of six, right? Now, if you really wanted to do an approximate graph, you could round off to the nearest tenth. What's this to the nearest tenth? 2.4. 2.4? 2.4. All right. So you could use that to, to kind of draw a graph. But I'm not going to ask you to do that. The only time I would do that is if this was a whole number. Okay. You see where you get the radius? Raise the square root of 6. Just like what we did here. You find the radius, you take the square root of 25. But 25 is a perfect square. What's the square root of 25? 5. In the other problem, you had um, 16. 16 is a perfect square. So what's the radius? 4. Here, 6 is not a perfect square. So you just have to say the square root of what? 6. Number 5, real quick. What is uh, um, x minus 3 squared plus y squared equal 10? x minus 3 squared plus y squared equal 10. What's the center? Uh, three, three, zero. 3, 0, right? 3, 0. The radius is going to be the square root of what? 10. Square root of 10. 10 is not a perfect square. The radius is going to be this irrational number. If you were to approximate it on your calculator to nearest tenth this time, That would be 3 point what? 3.2? All right, so any questions on this? Okay, so before I give you that first in class though, and it actually just be one in class. <laughs> yes? You got, you, uh, usually it'll say, give me the exact answer, square root of 10. If it says also the approximate answer, then you say 3.2. Okay? All right. All right. So before we can do the first scene class, there's one more thing we need to look at. So you say you could do the, you know, All right. the round no mutables wiggly line for approximate? 